Hello, Dawes Road family, and to those of you who've tuned in, welcome in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are praying for you, and we want you to be encouraged in your walk with Jesus. So in this four-minute Bible booster, let's once again turn to 1 John chapter 2, verse 12 to 14. John is encouraging the church family. They are winners. They are strong. So he addresses them as young men. Young men are known for their strength. They're winners. They're strong. And so we would put it this way. And again, it has nothing to do with gender or age, but just an encouragement for us to continue strong. So we would put it this way. I'm writing to you, young men, because you've overcome the evil one. He would say it once again in the end of verse 14. I'm writing to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you've overcome the evil one. You are a winner in Jesus. If you've received Jesus as Savior and Lord, you're a winner. And you are strong. Why are you a winner? Because Christ defeated the devil and won over sin for our eternal life through his death at the cross and through his resurrection. We are winners in Christ. Now, the devil is defeated, but he doesn't want to go out that quietly. He wants to, he's kicking back. He wants to contain you. He wants to put, bring doubt into your mind. He wants to destroy you if he still can, even though you are the winner. The battle's already been won, but he wants to do everything in his power to drag you down. And so he'll put excuses in our minds. And that can happen to any of us. It can happen even to pastors. Paul had to write to, the Apostle Paul had to write to a young pastor, Timothy, uh, to be strong. You're a winner. And Timothy would throw up all sorts of excuses. I've paraphrased some of the ones that we find written in the Paul's letters to, to this young pastor, Timothy. And Timothy would write things like this, um, or say things like this, and Paul would have to respond to this. I can't do anything. You are gifted by God. We're all gifted by God. I'm, I, I'm not healthy enough. Then take your medicine. I, I don't have a spiritual pedigree. Hey, hold on. Your grandmother, your mother are followers of Christ. You yourselves have people around you who are followers of Christ. You do have a spiritual pedigree. Oh, I, I find life too demanding. It's too overwhelming. That's why God gives you mercy. He knows what you're feeling. He knows it, how, how you struggle with those insecurities. But he gives you his strength. He empathizes with you. Praise God. Um, I, I have to walk this on my own. Paul says, no, no, I'm your mentor. Well, I, I don't know how to do it. Well, Paul says, I've set an example for you. Just do it the way I did it. Well, I, I don't find any support in the church. And unfortunately, sometimes that can happen. Sometimes some of the folks in the church can be quite critical. We're we're still in a fallen world, and sometimes that affects us, even our relationship with one another, even believers. Um, don't let that discourage you. Uh, God will bring some folks into the church family that will truly be an encouragement to you. Paul would have to remind Timothy, yeah, there are some that were discouraging you, but hey, remember Onesiphorus? What an example of an encouragement. He wasn't anything special in the church, no, but God used him to encourage me and to encourage you, and he's in your church. Uh, yeah, there are people to encourage you. Well, I just can't do it. Paul would have to say to Timothy, hold on here. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. In other words, no more excuses. Paul would wrap this up by saying this, you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What, what grace? What am I supposed to be saying strong in? In the grace of Jesus? What do you mean that? What do you mean about that favor? What do you mean? You're a winner. He had just reminded Timothy of those words in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. God has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who, listen to this, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You're a winner.